Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a nice, simple, easy project. Um, we're all in a little bit of a strange place at the moment. We are isolating, but not due to ill health, just for safety. So um, I am currently at home with two children, five dogs and a husband. So there may be background noises. There's not much I can do about it. Um, if I shut the door, then the dogs want to come in. So it's a kind of a, a loop. Um, Anyway, I have done today, so basically a little, um, <laughs> a little sort of um, background. I have tried a new setup. My husband's let me have a play about with his cameras and his tripods, and so I'm trying a new setup. So please bear with me. I've kept this project quite simple for that reason, because I'm trying out new ways of filming. Um, so what I've done for this project is using a Druzy gemstone, which is top drilled, which I have just here there we go so so this is using a blue druzy quartz i believe and or possibly an agate i'm not quite sure um but i love the sparkle on these gemstones i'm going to show you the back so you can see what i mean okay see the smooth gemstone just there and what i've done is i've just lay layered it with lots of flowing sort of swirls um and using bare copper wire which i really think complements this color gemstone um I, I believe this is quite a nice easy technique i think it's really good to sort of get your brain going a little bit it's you know you don't need to think about it too much using bare copper because you can use a stronger gauge of bare copper but it still has that malleability and you're able to get that sort of lovely flow and you're able to get that lovely flow in motion through the design so anyway let's go ahead and crack on with the video okay so the tools that you're going to need for this are very simple and basic your flush cutters or some kind of side cutters your chain nose pliers and your round nose pliers i would recommend a very um durable pair of cutters just so that you're able to cut the heavier gauges of wire so the materials you're going to use are some different gauges of wire which are going to be 0.6, some 1.5 or 1.25 and some 1 mil. Um, now the gemstone I'm going to be using is a top drilled pear shaped gemstone. This is a Druzy, Druzy Agate I believe. Um, and it has a quite a nice size drill hole at the top which takes the 0.6 wire if you have a smaller gemstone then you can reduce your wire to a 0.4 gauge i will put the conversions to these in the description box below additional tools that you can use will be the steel block a hammer jewelry hammer and a mat and a ring mandrel. So the ring mandrel will be used to form a shape to frame the pendant and the hammer and block will be used to flatten and strengthen the shape as well. This is decorative and is of course optional. Okay, so to start this, we're going to take the gemstone, we're going to take the heaviest gauge of wire, in my case 1.5, and I've cut enough wire that we'll be able to quite comfortably go around that gemstone crossover so this is just forming just to get an idea just for your benefit i'm going to want there to be a bit of negative space around the gemstone probably not that much and enough wire around there um and enough wire left to be able to also decorate that gemstone or create the bell or to do whatever you want with for this i've probably used around about half of a meter So to get the shape that I want, I'm going to use my ring mandrel and I'm going to find the centre of my wire and I'm going to form the wire around the ring mandrel so I get a really nice even shape. So I want it to look nice and clean as well. So you can see there, I've got that shape and what I can do is place my stone just to the top, remembering that it is a top drilled gemstone. I'm just pushing that in so that it can shape around it and making sure I'm happy with the amount of negative space I've got around that. We can make this a little bit larger if we want, but I'm going to make all of these decisions before I hammer the shape. If you find that the shape's a little bit uneven, you can come in with your pliers and just straighten that up. 
So you can see my shape there. I place my gemstone and that's the shape I've got there. Now if I wanted a little bit more to the side of the gemstone, again I can kind of widen this out a little bit. But you see every time I widen it out, it's always going to be snug around the top, but it's just increasing the space here. So I'm actually going to bring that back down to the shape and size that I'm happy with. And then I'm going to remove that stone. I'm then going to take my block, place my wire onto the block. Now you'll note that I'm holding the piece securely by the outer wires. I'm not going to get my fingers anywhere near where the hammer is going to hit because I don't want to hit my fingers. Now I am going to probably make the camera shake just purely because obviously the way I'm doing this. So you can see that I'm just tapping that quite hard just to flatten that wire. Now my hammer has got quite a few pick marks on it and that will transfer across to your actual wire frame. Let me move that for you. So you'll see there, but what will happen is if I turn it over that will be nice and smooth. So I'm going to use this as my front now. So that's really set that into a solid shape. Bring in my piece here. I can still adjust it, it's not made it so that you can't tweak it in any way, it's just again it's a decorative feature as well. So placing that there and I'm happy with how that's sitting. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is take a small piece of 0.6 wire, it doesn't need to be a long piece, this is simply to attach the gemstone to the frame. Feed this wire through the gemstone's drill hole. Find roughly the centre, place that into here. And then I'm just bringing that wire around the top just to secure it. So I'm just going to wrap it a couple of times. Again, I can tweak it. Just wrapping that two to three times. So you should be able to see that just there, rotating around and what I want to do is the same again here. So what I don't want to do is wrap um, down towards the bottom of the frame, I want to wrap towards the top part here. So I'm taking that wire and I'm feeding it up in between that little gap just there. Okay. And again, just to make that nice and secure, a couple of wraps either side and then I'm going to come in with my flush cutters and I am just going to trim those away. I'm then going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to just gently make sure that those edges are nice and flat against the frame. And they have a nice simple frame wrap and that is stage one. Okay so now I've taken two lengths of my one mil wire, they're probably about three uh, quarters of a metre maybe, okay. Just a nice workable length here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat them as if they were one wire. And I'm going to bring them again in between that gap, again in between that gap there, to about halfway. Okay. And then I'm going to just gently bring some curves down 
It's fine to go a little bit over the stone, catch the stone if you want to. Just a little bit of a swirl. And then I'm going to just take one individually and come around that frame. And because we've got a nice solid frame, we'll be able to bring them securely. It's not going to misshape the frame. It's going to hold its shape. So we've got one move so far. Now that wire has started to become secure to the frame. So what I'm then going to do, I'm going to do this in the best way I can, um, is I want to just, using my fingers, I'm just creating a swirl. What I want is to almost bring those wires back up. And again, I'm going to just do maybe holding this all nice and secure in my hand. Another swirl. Rotate the piece if you find that easier. However feels comfortable. Okay. I'm going to move those other two pieces out of the way because I haven't needed those just yet. And I'm going to bring these to the other side of where these two wires cross and around. So... If it gets a little bit too much and you're, you're a bit overwhelmed with all the wires, don't panic. These two thicker ones are your frame wires. These are your wires that you haven't started working on yet. And these are the wires that we're working with at the moment. So again, I'm just going to just bring them around and get that movement. Okay. I want to have that kind of illusion of almost like... Um, sort of just like vines kind of spiraling down again a few obviously the, the stone is moving at the moment that's because there's nothing on the back of it but that doesn't matter because it's i've used a nice strong wire to secure it to the frame which is your 0.6 however obviously we can easily do a bit of stabilizing to stop it swinging at a later state at a later stage. So again, I'm going to just, now I'm at the bottom again, I'm going to just bring this wire through, hold it nice and steady, and I'm going to just bring it all the way around. Use your pliers. What I actually did then was held everything nice and steady with my thumb, use my pliers to get that wire around that frame and nice and tight. And then again, I'm just going to kind of bring them just that little bit here to really give that support. And then what I can do is bring those wires up across the back. Okay. What I don't want is if you can see here, hopefully you can see where those wires are visible. I don't want that. I want it to have that floating illusion. So what I'm going to do is just bring that around the back now. I start to just catch the back of that just a little bit just to stabilize it and what I can do is take that wire because we're coming to the end of this wire now just feed it through a place in the wires preferably next to each other so you can see you've got that very minimal but quite crucial support to the back. Now your stone isn't going to go anywhere because it is attached, as I said, with a 0.6 wire. However, if you were using a 0.4 wire, whoops, sorry. If you were using a 0.4 wire, you would have to be aware of that being a bit of a finer gauge of wire and not necessarily being so secure. So placing that on there, rotating that, back so when you see now the stone doesn't move however what you don't want to do is if you are using transparent gemstone you don't want that to be visible so that may not work with that technique what I'm going to go ahead and do now is just blend these wires in so I'm taking this single one here just so it looks like it's part of the design I just use my round nose pliers to give that a curve then I'm just going to bring that so it blends Nicely away up here. I mean, obviously, don't do it if it's not. You need to, everyone will be different. 
your wires will place differently so it's just a matter of looking and seeing where you think you can blend that wire away into the design so I just tuck that wire up into that section there I've got this teeny tiny wire here so I'll probably bring that into a very small kind of swirl that should hopefully blend in here that's just tucked just there so hopefully you'll be able to see that okay so we've got this looking like this so again now it's completely up to you if you want to go further with this design or if you like it like that and one thing I'd say is don't be afraid to have a try with these wires and if you don't like it you can always undo it so you know you can stop at this stage if you wanted to but if you wanted to continue or just to see you have that option as well so I'm seeing it like this what I'm thinking is I might because obviously every single one's going to come out differently so these wires at the moment are at the back of this piece so I'm just going to bring them into a way so that they're going to blend nicely into the design so I've got them coming out of here what I can do is just bring it out across the front there can you see now I can either again swirl these down almost kind of into big waves bring that there and again maybe that swirl so it's really getting that detail but what's going to bother me a tiny little bit is just this little bit of wire here but I need that bit of wire to stabilise the stone so I'm going to look at a way to maybe bring a little rogue swirl just very minimal up here so what I'm going to do just to get this into shape is again I'm just holding this nice and steady and I'm bringing this back around that frame Okay, so you can see that's now in a place that I should be able to take these two wires and just do a bit more of a kind of, um, just literally the lightest of swirls. So what's great about this wire, because we're using a one mil, but because it is bare copper, what it's doing is it is easy to form fluid shapes. So I'm just bringing this wire up now to the point that I want it to go. So I'm just bringing it around because I want to cover that little piece of wire work there. So both those wires have now come across here. Again, that's adding a teeny bit of support and stabilization to the back of the gemstone. You can position them a little bit if you want to. Take that moment because you want it to look nice from the back if you can. Okay, let's bring that. So we've got that wire there. Bring it across to here. And then again, I'm just going to swirl those wires. Okay, so that's where we're looking at the moment. This is where you can start to think. How am I happy with how this is going? So you could say, you know what, I'm going to, and again, try it. If you don't like it, then you don't have to keep it. So I think if I was to bring this down like this, would I like that? Or am I losing where I was going with it a little bit? I could do that and then bring this one up to here. Because I still need to work what's happening there so actually that one could work there that could come back down to here almost um, I don't love there we go so I've just pulled that spiral down a little bit to make it that a little bit more delicate what I might do is just see if I can feed it through, I'll definitely feed it through those wires. I'm 
bringing it down. flourish and remember if I don't like any of this I can always come back and um, get rid of it remember if you don't like this move you can easily undo it okay so as you can see this is where we're at at the moment so I'm just gonna bring this wire and probably sort of let it have a natural flow back up to the top and then both these wires are here now what what you have to be aware of and conscious of is if you bring these wires up and then start you can get a little bit too wire heavy here now what I'm doing is bringing that all the way around towards the back there and same on this one and then bring that around so that is those wires done. Now again, you can blend them back down to this if you felt you wanted to. If you felt this was maybe a little bit too um, plain and you wanted to give it a little bit more swirls, it's completely up to you, it's your choice. Now what I'm going to do is just take my flush cutters and I'm gonna cut it just here. So that I can then take those wires and tuck them around this, sorry, and tuck them <clears throat> so I can take those wires here and tuck them around this frame here and into the piece so they disappear. Okay, so those have gone. So now you've got this as your sort of piece. So you've got your outer frame of wires here. Now there's a couple of options what you can do is you could bring them down to add a little extra layer of depth and texture to your piece into the actual swirls if you wanted to if you felt that you were happy with this you could simply um, make a bale do some wire weaving into this and make a bale but what you've got to think about is your balance of your design so for me personally if I was to start adding like a woven bale into this I feel like I would be sort of conflicting against the natural swirls of the design of the piece. So I would be tempted to not go down that road. Um, so there's a choice. You can bring your wire, turn the piece over and look at the back. So if I wanted to bring, say, this piece, which was more in the right place, I could simply roll that. I could simply roll this wire into a coil have a floating style pendant so that the coil would be on the back there place your cord through and that would be a floating style or I could do a rolled bale here using say this wire so I'm going to show you both options so I'll show you the back up close so you can see why I chose the wires for each project so can you see how this wire is naturally a bit further down and is more central so actually that would be ideal for a floating bale style pendant but this one is more central it's more stable as well whereas this one's got a bigger gap around it this is more stably wrapped just the way that it's, it's um, happened so this would be the wire that I would choose to do the bale if I wanted to so what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you that bale quickly so I've just made sure that it is central. Now this wire is probably about, let's have a quick look. It's about 15 centimeters. I'll work out what the inches are of that, but it's about 15 centimeters in length. So I don't need that much wire to create a bale with a couple of loops. Now again, this is another option, but if you've been bail making a pair of pliers, then this would be the time to use them. I have a couple of pairs. I've got these six step pair ones here. I have these which are just two sizes but they're continuous down each side. So whichever ones you prefer to use. When I'm doing a larger bell I tend to prefer to use these because the space is more consistent. Now I know that this is going to be way too long 
for sort of like let's say three rotations so I'm going to probably cut let's have a quick look about six centimeters of that away so this is now about 11 sorry about nine centimeters again balance I'm going to go in with the slightly smaller side here of my pliers and I'm just going to place the wire in here so it's flush to the top and I am going to simply roll now bearing in mind I am using the frame wire so this is a 1.5 so you can see those that roll to give me three loops still left me with about a centimeter gap so can you see that there let me find it right for you so what I can do now is I have to continue and tidy that up so if I do that I'm at a place now hopefully so I'm at a place now where I can this to the bottom dependent trim that little sort of tail off so I've still got three loops tie that up and that would be your bail yes you will have that little edge just there but there's not really much you can do about that but you can have that if you wanted to the other thing I like to do with a bail like this is take my pliers and simply come in between each sort of loop and open it out so it's a little bit more decorative tidy that up So you can see that there, make it so you're happy with it, tweak it if you want, okay. So you can have that as your pendant or, and I will just do this and then I'll probably cut one or the other off and show you again how you can actually cut the wire. Again cut a couple of centimetres away, again you don't need the large side. And just roll that it's probably too large probably would drop down size but what you would do with that if you can see there is that would sit there and then whatever you chose to use as um, your um, neckline that would then float almost obviously this isn't the best example but it would be against your neck so it would give the illusion kind of floating star necklace that's what that would look like like that if you used that style again you can do this whatever size you want if you did this smaller you could just pop a chain through or a piece of um <coughs> excuse me or a piece of boona cord or something like that in fact i've got some here of the boona cord to show you what i mean boona cord is just kind of like a rubber solid rubber tube cord so if you had that like that it would simply float okay now obviously the one thing to be aware of when you do a floating bale is i don't know if you can see but can you just about see through that gap there the actual bale so that obviously is something that you don't want so i'd reduce the size of that to avoid that um you know and then you can have it just dropped through there if you like as well i actually quite like it with the the normal style bale so I said I would show you how to get rid of one bale or the other so what I'm going to do in this occasion is unroll this one and I'm going to simply trim that down to about a centimetre and then I'm going to just bring this fold that down bear in mind I am using a heavier gauge so I've got to be a bit more controlled trim it again Just tuck that wire just underneath. Now all I did then was take took my pliers and just gently almost flattened everything. So you see there it does blend in. I'll show you from the side. Oops. 
Okay, so you can see just from there, if I turn it around, so by doing that, what I did was I tucked that end just nicely into there. When you turn it around from the front, there's nothing visible, and it does look like it's almost kind of just floating and suspended into the corner of that pendant. Then you've got your bell there, which, as I said, you could pop anything. I really like copper on a kind of a black contrasting cord like this i think it looks really nice but you could just pop a copper chain through it some wire if you wanted to but there you have your sort of ethereal flowing court drowsy pendant um i hope you like this video i'd love to see how you get on with it if you like this design um you know if you have a go let me know um, if you hit any problems, give me a shout and I'll see if I can help it anyway. Um, give me any ideas of anything you might want to see in the future. And for now, stay safe and keep crafting.